And even though that she doesn't love me too much, doesn't mean I don't love her. She's amazing. I've been working with this King Cobra since I was about 17, 18 years old. And she's always been a beast. Look at that. But she is on high guard right now, so let's not make any mistakes. Whoop. Let's get her into camp. Nice. Relax, relax. You are just on fire today. Always use a tool to open up a container containing venomous reptiles for that reason right there. You never know where their head's gonna be at. You ready? Good girl. Is that a good yeti? Huh? Good prawn? You're getting so big. I'm so proud of you. Look how beautiful her colors are, her eyes. Everything about this crocodile is magnificent. What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. I'm hanging out with Bagoy, the Eurasian Eagle Owl, and look how big he's getting. He is a beast of an owl. Look at that, those huge tufts on the top. Beautiful for intimidating predators. Oh, are you gonna, are you gonna give me a kiss, huh? He's such a beautiful boy. And we're just enjoying a nice walk around the property, making sure everything's looking good. And we got Bear right here. The big old bear dog, the wolf killer. What are you doing, baby? Huh? Give me a kiss, give me a kiss. Good girl, good girl. All right, so let's go see what's going on with the reptiles. We're gonna go take care of the king cobras, and then we're gonna go measure our new saltwater crocodile so we can keep track of how big it gets, because it's gonna be the biggest reptile on the planet. Let's go. Welcome to the snake house. Welcome to the snake house where everything goes down and it gets wild. Today, we're gonna be dealing with the king cobras, give them some fresh water, make sure we take out any of the doo-doo in there, so we're gonna do some spot cleaning, clean the glass, and as well as I wanna show you what's cooking inside here. Notice that we took out the crocodilian, so now we have all this space on this wall, and as soon as we can, we're gonna get an enclosure built for the lace monitors, so then this cage is gonna get moved. But what's even more exciting than anything is on Monday, ooh, we're getting an AC unit, God bless, praise the Lord! We're about to get that cool AC, oh my God. Right here, we're gonna get our new AC unit. It's gonna have a duct going down, elbowing to the center. So we're finally gonna have nice, cool air. We're getting a four ton unit. We gotta pull permits for it, gotta do a concrete slab outside, a whole bunch of stuff, but it's happening. It's finally freaking happening. So I'm super excited. And thank you for everyone who's been contributing. Thank you to everyone who's been buying t-shirts in support of this build out. It's a lot and it's still gonna be much, much more. This is just like the tip of the iceberg because after this, Eventually, we got to do all the drywall for this building, drop the ceiling, walking king cover enclosures, do the floors, and then either before that happens or after that happens, we still need to get an eight foot perimeter fence around the whole entire 11 acres. It's required by FWC, and also I'm doing it as a security measure to make sure no one breaks into my property and messes with my animals. More so uh, not to steal my animals and also not to get killed by my animals because uh, I don't own puppies out here. So <laughs> definitely want to make sure this is a nice secure facility. But today we're going to get into it with the King Cobras, see how they're doing. I haven't taken Kevin out in a little bit, so it'd be nice to take him out, see how he's doing. I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll get some water in that can. We'll give him a nice big soak. So let me put the key in the lock and I'll be right back. Let me go get that can. So we got some fresh water right in there, about a foot of it, so that's some nice depth for Kevin to soak in. And I think we'll take Justina out after that so she can soak, because you know these water dishes, good enough for them to get their drink, but not good enough to soak their whole entire body. Ooh, look at you big boy. Are you hungry? I got a bunch of pythons that I can defrost for you. I think what we'll do, oh, nice and easy. Let's just gently grab this coil up. Okay, relax, buddy. And I think what we'll do, this will do a feeding episode coming up. Relax, nice and easy. Nice and smooth. Now this is obviously how you never want to handle a king, but I know this guy very well. He's fairly a good boy. Worked with him for over three years now. We've had little to no issues, but although I should always mention, I've been working with venomous reptiles since I was a little kid, and I'm licensed. This is not something you want to replicate. He's a He's definitely a top predator that needs his respect. Look at that huge venom glands. He's a beast. Look at that. Careful, Ruth. Look at that beautiful hood. He's looking marvelous. Look at those colors. Look at this. Look at that. Look at the chevrons on the back of the hood right there. He's looking so beautiful. And there's actually somebody in Texas who has a Chinese king cobra, which is really rare again in the U.S., and uh, he's looking to rehome it. So we might actually do a road trip to go pick up this snake. Maybe in like a month or something. We'll see what happens. But we've got so much cooking here at the Serpentarium that we can't leave for, for too long. So we'll definitely see what happens. Oh, relax, Kevin. We'll definitely see what happens. It's okay, buddy. Look at that. He's such a beautiful king cobra. And I'm just gently touching him on the back of the hood. 
It's not making him purr like a kitty or anything like that. I'm just stimulating him, touching him, trying to get him to relax, if anything. Not putting any pressure on his spine, trying to get him to hook anymore, just gently rubbing him. He is such a beast of a king cobra. And I think he would love us so great now because of how hot it is inside the Serpentarium. And that's the key to, to keeping these guys nice and happy. It's making sure they don't get too hot. Because even though this is an animal from India and Asia, they do not like it too hot. They come from the forest and they love to swim through rivers. So it's definitely good to soak them so they can cool down. Let's get them in there. And once I get that AC unit installed, it's gonna make a huge difference Gonna make him feel a lot better, make Justina feel a lot better. Ooh, relax. Nice and easy, Kevin. Come on, let's get that big piece of spaghetti in there. Come on. Nice and easy, Kevin. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. There we go. Oh, oh, hello, Kevin. Come on. Right back in there, please. All right. Now that he's in the can, he's gonna soak. We're gonna leave him in there for about an hour, honestly, because we really want him to cool down, soak up as much water as possible, and feel nice and good. Uh, in the meantime, let's see. We're gonna do some spot cleaning, make sure this cage is nice and clean. Gonna clean this glass. Possibly take out Justina and soak her as well to make sure she cools down. Because we do not want these guys overheating. It's just way too hot. I really wish I could have gotten the AC unit way sooner, but because of the cost of lawyer fees, the cost of contractor fees, all the stuff that we had to fix after the county started attacking me when I first moved out here, Everything's been delayed. I would have loved to have gotten my AC unit in the first month or two of living in this beautiful place, but as you guys remember, I was being harassed like crazy, and that whole court thing is gonna be closed up pretty soon. We'll be done with it, and we'll move on to the future. I think everyone out here is learning that once you have these FWC permits and you're responsible, you're not going anywhere unless you make serious mistakes. And obviously, I've made sure everything in my building is nice and secure, snake-proof, and I'm always following my protocols. We're gonna finally move on. It just took a three and a half, four months of being handcuffed and dealing with all the drama first. All right, let's get him a fresh bowl of water. I see some poop in the back. We're gonna clean all that out, take care of Justina, and then we're gonna go feed all the crocs some fresh shrimp, and then see how big this saltwater crocodile is getting. We're gonna start measuring them every other month. Fresh H2O, oh, it's so good, I love it. All right, let me take this out. All that nasty stuff, all that leftover Burmese python that he's digested. Ooh, look at that. Wow, look at that. That's like a little, a uh, little petrified piece of poo-poo right there. I should, I should keep it and give it to the fan the next time I run into one. Boop. Save that for a good time. Maybe I'll see somebody at Daytona and give it to them. All right, so I think we're pretty good. There wasn't a whole lot of poop in there. Just gonna take all the mulch out the track, make sure that glass is nice and clean. Just a simple spot cleaning. I'd only do a deep cleaning if you just ate a big Burmese python. There's poop all over the place and it's just so disgusting. You wanna replace all that mulch. So he's good to go. Big bowl of fresh water, so he'll be able to drink that up. Let's get this clean, ammonia-free Windex. Always what you want to use for your reptiles. You never want to hit them with that ammonia. There we go, beautiful. Make sure we get every little scuff. What's your favorite king cobra fat? <laughs> What's my favorite king cobra fat? Yeah. That they build nests like crocodiles, that's dope. And they defend them like crocodiles. I mean, uh, the King Cobra Conservancy, tracking king cobras out in the wild have literally seeing these guys sit on nests, build them up with their coils, like a mound that tall, and then the females guard the nest like a female crocodile. It's so cool. I mean, seriously, guys, if you love King Cobras and you want to support them, check out the KCC, the King Cobra Conservancy. They do nothing but support the conservation of the ecosystem of King Cobras and other species. Let's see, I get that glass where it needs to go. Let me get this nice and clean, and I'll see you guys in a splick and a splat of a splish in a spa. So we got the glass nice and clean. Leave it right there. Let's get Kevin back to where he belongs. Let's see, I'm crack it open. Always use a tool to open up a container containing venomous reptiles for that reason right there. You never know where their head's gonna be at. What's going on, dude? Are you good? Your one eye looks a little foggy. Are you gonna go through shed soon? You look a little dull. Even, even though he looks a little dull, he's still so pretty. He's such an amazing King Cobra. Ooh. Yes, 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 I know, I know. Big beautiful boy. All right, nice and smooth. We don't want him to up chuck any water or anything like that. So we gotta make it nice and smooth. Come on. Ooh, look at him. Such a beast of a king cobra. Obviously, it takes a lot of training and experience to be able to handle snakes like this. And this is an individual with a very different personality from, for example, Justina, my very defensive king cobra. 
So you never want to mimic anything that I do. And obviously, a King Cobra has the ability to incapacitate a full-grown bull elephant. So imagine a human that weighs nothing compared to an elephant. Very bad bite. Do they want to bite you? No. Like I always say, it's only when the big monkey man grabs the snake by the tail that they start to retaliate and defend themselves. Snakes want nothing to do with us. Even the deadliest snake on the planet, the most potent snake drop for drop, the inland taipan, wants nothing to do with anyone. And it lives in the middle of nowhere, so it's not gonna run into you unless you're a, you're a herper and you go out there looking for one. All right, you guys know Justina? She's a whew, a very defensive female king cobra. And we're gonna pull her out. Let's see. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. I think when she gets a walk-in King Cobra enclosure, woo! When she gets that walk-in enclosure, ooh, she just bit herself. When she gets that walk-in King Cobra enclosure, she might actually mellow out, which is gonna be amazing. Look at that. See that defensive posture that she gets into? She's gaping her mouth. Her trach is flared open. She's just letting me know she just wanna get messed with, and that's it. She'd rather, she rather mind her own. Woo! Don't bite me. I'm gonna make sure she doesn't fall. Make this a nice, smooth transition to the can. Look at that tongue flaring. Such a magnificent King Cobra. And even though that she doesn't love me too much, doesn't mean I don't love her. She's amazing. I've been working with this King Cobra since I was about 17, 18 years old. And she's always been a beast. Look at that. There we go. Takes it easy. You're gonna go like that? Okay, I'm cool with that. There we go. Nice and easy. Smooth, Justina Spoon. Yeah, she's really dark right now, so she's probably gonna go through shed soon. Relax. Look at that, she's such an incredible snake. But she is on high guard right now, so let's not make any mistakes. Whoop. Let's get her into the camera. Thanks. Relax, relax. You are just on fire today. She's gonna really enjoy getting cooled off. Whoop. Look at that. Such a beast of a king cobra. Nice and easy, Justina. Get that body in there. It's about a foot of water, so whoo! It's about a foot of water, so nice, easy landing, nice and soft. Now, when she struck out like that, it's only because she sees this big lid moving around, and that lid catches her attention. Yeah, that's good. Nice. Whoa! Relax, Justina. Relax. Just a little gentle tap. She's following me like crazy right now. Nice and easy, baby. I'm just gently touching her to redirect her. Similar to spinning an alligator. I'm getting the alligator in the right direction for capture. All right. Easy, right? <laughs> All right, kids, don't mimic that at home. All right, now we're gonna clean up that glass. It's got a little good bit of goo on it. Gonna clean that water. There's a little bit of fecal on the sides. Make sure it's nice and scrubbed down. We're gonna dump this out. Let her soak for about an hour as well. Maybe let myself soak as well, it's getting so hot. And then we'll see you guys in a split. All right, let's see, crack that open. Try and do this without anything crazy. How'd you like that, sweetie? Nice big soak, huh? Ooh. You are beautiful, you know that? Just remember that before you bite me. Look at that. Such a beast of a king cobra. Alright. Alright, I get it. No snake hook. No, those are my knees. I need them. Relax. There we go. You see your enclosure right there? Nice and clean. Big bowl of water. If you just turn around, you'll see how nice it is. Might have to do a little spin around. There we go. Right in there. Oh, come on. There you go. Perfect. What a beast of a king cobra. Roughly like a 13 foot female king cobra. She's a beast. Love her to death. Notice that she's like a 7, 8 foot skinny little baby. Put that tail on there. Perfect. All right, let's lock this up. Make sure it's nice and secure. Perfect. I love you. Don't stress out too much. We're gonna get you a big kingdom soon. You and Kevin. All right, beautiful people. Let's go out there and see how all the crocs are doing. The crocodilians, caiman crocs. What else do I have? Calamanders? No, we don't have any calamanders. Anyways, we're gonna go feed these crocodilians. We got some nice fresh shrimp, whole shrimp with the head still, which is really good, extra calcium. Let's go feed these guys. Oh. Who's there? 
Who's at my door? It's me. We're filming today. I haven't installed a sea hole, a seeing hole, an, an eye hole, a door hole. It's me. Trust me. It's Ruth. Ruth? Yeah. Ruth what? Ruthless Ruth. That's not your legal name. I sign your paperwork. Ruth Mary Gonzalez? Ah, Ruth Mary Gonzalez. Come in, come in. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, yes, please, thank you, come thank in. you. Welcome to my crocodilian crib. This is where I keep all my sweet little toothy babies. Here, we're going to be feeding my beautiful girl, Ziggy. Ziggy, let's see how hungry she is, because after we moved her over here, she was a little shy, but she should be hungry now. Come on. See, after moving her to a new spot, totally different. She's not as keen for food on the call, so maybe I'll have to entice her. We'll put some shrimp at the surface. Whole shrimp, calcium with the shell. Come on, baby. Oh, she's shy right now. That's a shame. I'm gonna drop it right there and she should snap it up. Here we go. Boom! Look at that. Like nothing. Let's hide it. Make sure we don't scare her. Baby, you like that? Some tasty shrimp? See how she's raising her head up? She has to raise her head up above the surface so she can swallow her food. If she opens her mouth, her throat opening underneath the water, she'll basically drown and engulf too much water. So that palatal valve, that half moon shape in the back of the throat stays sealed underwater and only opens at the surface. Come on. You want some more? Oh, she's being so shy. All right, I think we're gonna let her chomp on that for a second, let her get adjusted. And we're gonna feed somebody who I know is gonna be super enthused for food. Bridget, the broad snout came in. The Bridget shrimp. Come on, look at her. She's looking at it, she's eyeing it. Come on, oh, ballistic, did you see that? <gasps> Grab that shrimp, oh, oh, oh. you ready? Come on, I see you looking. Here we go, come on. Ooh, there we go, good girl, look how pretty she is. That natural sunlight is making her pop like crazy. And you know what? She's gonna need a bigger setup soon because she's growing quick. She's gonna need one of these big seven, eight foot waterland tubs. I think I'm gonna go pick some of those waterland tubs up at the Daytona Reptile Show this weekend, Saturday. I mean, I'm not going, I'm not going. You want some more shrimp? You beautiful girl. I'm gonna drop it right there. Oh, a nice little shrimp hat. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> it seems like she's being a little bit shy. Like I said, we moved these guys all a couple days ago, so it's still a new area. And look, Ziggy's still holding on to that shrimp. And usually, Ziggy's coming over like crazy to the food call, chomping up food, ready for the next bit. All right, guys, now we have the saltwater crocodile right here. This is actually the original salty that I got. A little bit smaller, actually a lot smaller. And we're going to offer this little guy some shrimp too. Not going to eat a lot of food, so we're just going to pick out a real tiny shrimp. All right, I see a small shrimp in here. We're going to take that head off because the head's a little too much. And we're just gonna leave it right here next to this salty. This is little Padme. Padme, the female saltwater crocodile. I'm gonna leave that shrimp right there, or as you'd say in Australia, a prawn. Don't call them shrimp, just prawns and yetis. Gonna close this up, leave that croc alone. It's so crazy, no one's eager for food. Usually everyone's all over the place. Ziggy! Ziggy! I got another big one right here. Come on, don't be shy. Come on, Ziggy. Yes, look at that. Perfect. Come on, baby. Go on, good girl. Look how big she's getting. Come on. Come on. Come on. You ready? Good girl. Is that a good yabby? Huh? Good prawn? You're getting so big. I'm so proud of you. Look how beautiful her colors are, her eyes. Everything about this crocodile is magnificent. And she's getting, she's getting big. She's like roughly around like two and a half, three feet right now. So once she hits over four feet, I'm required by the state to have an eight foot perimeter fence for my crocodilian. So that's a really big reason why I'm trying to push for getting that eight foot perimeter fence before the year's over. Not just because Ziggy's gonna be big eventually. Ooh, you little, you little upset? Not just because Ziggy's gonna be big soon, but I actually have adult crocodiles on hold for me. Let's just say, uh, let's just say there's a, a full grown female Cuban crocodile that's seven feet long and about 15, 18 years old waiting for me. If I get my fencing up soon, we'll be able to move her over here. And then that's gonna be a critically endangered crocodile we're gonna be working on breeding. So it's gonna be even more efforts towards conservation. It's also exciting. Whoop, a little snappy I see. Come on, Ziggy. I see you doing your little scuttle on the bottom. Another thing I'm thinking about doing is putting white sand at the bottom of all these tubs so the weight on their feet can be dispersed and they don't ever get anything like lesions on their feet. Usually that happens more commonly with a concrete pool, but we're trying to keep this as natural as possible for all the animals. So I'm thinking about doing sand for all the bottoms and also the white sand will make their colors pop even more. Look how pretty she is when the sun hits her. 
Let's see if I can just drop that shrimp nice and smoothly. Watch her catch it, look at this. Boom, look at that. That is just too cool watching her take down these little yaddies. Ooh, you are so beautiful, Ziggy. I love you. She's such a beast of a crocodile. And you know what? Let's see how her future boyfriend's doing. It looks like Bobby's hungry. He swam over here. Bobby. Oh, look, he might be a little interested. Come on, Bobby. I'm gonna drop it right next to Bobby's face. Come on, Bobby. Boom, there we go. He's such a pretty little crocodile. And you know what, he could eat a little more shrimp, so I'm gonna crack off another piece in a second. You know, this being an estuary and crocodile living in salt water, mangroves and whatnot, they will eat shrimp at this size all the time. Shrimp, fish, fiddler crabs. So it's really good to involve that crustacean diet because the shell adds a lot of calcium and it's really good. All right, we're gonna feed Ziggy some more. Let's go over here and see if Ziggy's gonna come for some. Ziggy. Ziggy. Look. Ooh, look how big she is. And she hisses a little bit when she comes over. She's becoming a true crocodile. Such an impressive animal. Come on, baby. I'm gonna drop it right on your head, okay? Don't get my fingers. Boom! How's that? How's that, huh? You're so beautiful. I can't get over these crocs. It's so nice to have them in direct sunlight now. And they also have this, uh, these little platforms, pieces of plywood and whatnot to keep the water from overheating because we are in direct sunlight almost throughout the whole entire day. I got more right here, right when you're done, baby. Swallow it up. Good girl, listen to that crunch. Woo! Ready for some more? Yeah, look at her sneaking over below. I'm gonna drop it right on her face again, you ready? Let's see. Whack! Woo! Nice big meal. Good girl. You are so pretty. Yes, you are, you're such a pretty crocodile. Ooh, and the sun comes out and shines right upon it. I think what I'll do now is, since she's gonna eat a lot more, that's not gonna be it. We're gonna dump a whole bunch of shrimp in here. So let's put all that shrimp in there. Let her forage for this. Oh, she's so happy. Let her forage for all this shrimp. Get a nice full belly on the prawns. Ooh, that's gonna be tasty, Ziggy. You're gonna love that. Such a good crocodile. Anakin the saltwater crocodile. He's hanging out right there in his bricks and you can see that beautiful yellow tail sticking out. I mean, he's gorgeous. We want to get an exact measurement of how long he is right now so in the future we can look back on this and take track of his growth rate because saltwater crocodiles are supposed to have the fastest growth rate of any of the crocodilians. So what I'll do is he's definitely not you know like three feet long so we'll put it about that long. Leave the measuring tape on the floor. Let's see. Oh, it's a little bit curved. This measuring tape's a little bit broken, but we'll get the idea. Put them right there on the tip, get the shot, and we're gonna send that info to Savannah over at Gatorland, and we're all gonna keep track of our salties and see, see how big these guys get. Because of course, a male saltwater crocodile has the potential to get over 20 feet long. All right, let's take them out nice and smooth. We don't wanna stress them out. We also don't wanna get bit. Nice and easy. Oh, he is so pretty. Look at that crocodile and such a good attitude. Usually a saltwater crocodile is real snappy like when we first got him, but he's starting to mellow out, not being too bad. I mean, look at those colors. He is just so neon yellow and beautiful. I mean, I exaggerate when I say neon this, neon that, but man, look at how those colors pop. Such a beautiful crocodile. And those cute little feet, look at those feet. Perfect for pushing through the water and helping excavate little wallows during the dry season. All right, so what we wanna do is just lay him along this. See if I can put my foot right there. There we go. And we're just gonna put him right along, nice and straight. There's the tip of his tail right there. And he's about 23 inches long. Look at that. He is just under two feet. Oh, what a little beast. We'll, we'll give that info to Savannah and whoever else has uh, saltwater crocodiles from this batch. And we'll keep track of how big everyone's getting. Look at him. What a 
beast of a sword. I can't, I'm never going to get sick of this guy because as he gets bigger and bigger, he's going to look more and more beautiful, more and more of a beast of a crocodile. Like, this has always been my dream animal, a male saltwater crocodile. And he's going to have a huge exhibit here, probably going to be like an acre-sized enclosure. All the big crocodiles, all the biggest species that need deep water, everyone's going to get like a nice big-sized acre enclosure. And then all of our medium-sized species will get something slightly smaller than that. So everyone gets to live the best life possible here in captivity and have natural ponds so they feel so so in their natural habitat that they'll want to mate and make little <laughs> make little babies and keep on producing more and more of their species so we can have them in captivity and definitely not going to be breeding caucasian mountain shepherds <laughs> right Barra? we we love you and only you no no more dogs please i love you anakin you're such a good crocodile we're gonna put them right here in the water well oh, oh nice and easy or i'll just put them right here on land let him do what he wants right back into the water look how beautiful he is we're gonna throw some shrimp in there some whole shrimp good calcium because him being an estuarian crocodile as well, living on the coast of the Northern Territory of Australia, they would love to eat yabbies like this, prawns. Just gonna throw some shrimp right in there and he'll eat that when he gets a chance and he feels nice and comfortable. Look at that croc, one more shot. Look how beautiful that croc is. Even in the shadows, he looks magnificent. I love him to death. All right, beautiful people, that's gonna be it for this episode. I will see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, don't forget to check us out on chandlerswildlife.com where you can buy your own specialized merchandise with my face on it. Stay passionate with Kevin the King Cobra. Get stickers, get shirts, hoodies, all that good stuff. Everything you guys buy will go towards the build out of this beautiful facility. As well as if you wanna contribute, you can actually go to our contribute button and you can donate to the build out of this beautiful facility as well. We're not non-for-profit, so it's just contributing, not really donating, but if you guys would like to help with the build out of this beautiful place, we'd really appreciate it. It's getting pricey, like I said, and we want to get this going. We want to get it going fast so we can start letting people come over and hang out. Obviously not big tour buses like my neighbors thought, but just a couple of friends hanging out, checking out the animals, learning about these beautiful creatures and getting up close and personal. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe. I'll see you at August 29th, Hatch Fest, get around. If you guys want to come out, meet and greet and hatch some baby alligators, I'll see you there. Otherwise, live your lives, stay passionate, do what you want with your lives, and never let anyone get in the way of that. I love you guys. Oh, and I love you too. Mm. Wait, you want a shrimp? Oh, she wants a shrimp. Save that for a good time. Maybe I'll see somebody at Daytona and give it to them. <laughs>